Welcome back, Joyce and Justice League, to part two of Breaking News 002 with me, Mike Fruzios. Joe Bourne. And we're getting into some uh, different stuff now. We're getting into some RPGs, uh, some quirky games. Let's start off with something that has got me really excited for the beta next year. Um, this game's getting some buzz. This one's called Freedom Wars. So this is one's coming from Sony Computer Entertainment, but it was actually made in conjunction with Shift, who gave us the God Eater series, which was like basically blew the PSP and the Vita out of the water in Japan. Yeah. And also, Dimps, the makers of, get this, Sonic Lost World, Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Sonic Advance on the Game Boy Advance, Super Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter X Tekken, Dragon Ball Z, and Naruto. So we got some heavy industry experience. And I can really tell that from the trailer. There's a lot of influences inspired this game. So tell us a bit about Freedom Wars. Set this, set this up for us. No, it's a, for me, this game feels like, it's like prototype meets Final Fantasy. Yeah, that, nice. That's why I felt, because it's, it's, it's got your, uh, it's got your Final Fantasy type of health, but you're also you're going up all over the place. I mean, it, it, it's it's there, there's a lot of stuff going on in this game. Yeah, because at first you want to say, okay, well, this seems like another God Eater, or another no, Monster that. Hunter. Oh. No, but I mean, you've got the platform, you've got the wall jumping, so it's bringing kind of shades of like uh, Gravity Rush. And also a cool story. Oh, yeah. So you, and this is set in a totalitarian, totalitarian future United Kingdom where basically Big Brother's taken over. You got millions of cameras all over the place. So you, already in the story I can tell is going to be pushing some buttons and, and especially in light of all the NSA controversy that's going on these days. Um, why are people going to play this? Like, do you think this could be something that sells views? I think it definitely will. I think, uh, I think it may end up being that killer app for the Vita. Yeah, this, like, so far it's exclusive. Too. Yeah. And, and just JRPGs are like the hottest thing right now. I mean, like really, like uh, since Nino Kuni and Tales of Zillia and, and Dragon's Crown in the past year, I, I think that whole JRPG mentality, the, the, why people like to play those games is really starting to translate over to a Western audience, especially with, with the buzz that God Eater got, like the, the, what these developers worked on before. That whole Monster Hunter genre is really getting big now and soul sacrifice and all that kind of stuff. But what I like is that it sets apart with like an actual story, it's, like an actual sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna get to be a real kick in the pants that it, that it, that it needs because, because uh, you know, other than the remote, the remote play, you know, there's some good experiences on. It, but this is gonna be, I think it's gonna be a really, really killer game for the system. I think so too. I think yeah. the Vita is, it's, it's kind of finding its legs now, and finding its niche. I think that it was nice to see Killzone Mercenary, you know, these these cool looking AAA titles. But really, I think Tearaway. And games like God Eater now, like these these RPGs, is re really drove the Vita in Japan. I think you can drive it here too. I oh, think yeah. the RPGs are coming to season again in, in yep. the popular culture, and just the fact that it's like this future totalitarian setting, this could really blow. Yeah, it's a nice combination of, of that to have some modern day stuff thrown into the, the GRPGs. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, very, very unique. Yeah, taking it out of the usual, you know, high school setting or fantasy yeah. setting, and it's actually into that like people this. aren't going to necessarily expect. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a little su surprise. Oh, absolutely. Uh, lots of great RPG stuff coming out, though. I mean, there's this really cool one coming out for Wii U, actually, an exclusive that was actually revealed recently on a Nintendo Direct. It's called Hyrule Warriors. Oh, wow. Okay, so what did you see from this? The, the, this, the, this looks pretty sweet. This is basically, uh, it's like Zelda, and he's basically in Dynasty Warriors. That's pretty much it. It's yeah. just like, take you know, Ocarina of Time and throw in the Dynasty yeah. Warriors universe with like multiple enemies yeah. and like this crazy combat system yeah, yeah. and you've got this really cool new exclusive for the Wii U that I think is going to just kind of blow out of the water if it comes out like next summer or next spring, fall. Well, yeah, it's going to be a nice uh, action game for, for, for the Wii U. That's, yeah, so, you know, even like a, obviously fans of Zelda are going to be in this, but it's, it's going to be Zelda in a totally different kind of game than he's used to being in. Yeah, total kind yeah. of brawler, just yeah. lots of enemy sprites. And, and and just kind of I see I see what Nintendo's doing. I mean, being a badass. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> and, and just taking their taking their iconic characters and putting them into different genres, yeah. which I think is what they need to keep doing. I think they've they've experimented with Mario. Now they need to try to do that with Zelda. Sure. They've done it with Metroid. Yeah. It seems to offer a lot, and uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if Koei's on board, but you know, the, the Dynasty Warriors games uh, were pretty hot for a reason, and I, and I think just putting it in the high rule landscape is really going to do something for Nintendo here. So, really cool stuff uh, around the time of Mario 8, Mario Kart 8, and Super Smash Bros. Something a little bit different. Um, kind of going into a different territory now. There's, this one's coming out for PS4, PS3, and Vita in conjunction. This one's called Hell Divers from Arrowhead Game Studios. 
the people who gave us the Magicka series on the PC and 360. So you kind of told me about this one. Yep. What did you kind of gather from Helldivers? This is uh, basically it's for you know for, for people who are fans of the, the Starship Troopers uh, movies. It, it's basically it, it's it's an action game based in that kind of a universe. And but the, the really really cool thing about this is that these guys are gonna they're gonna make it. I think they'll be successful at making cross platform play again. True cross True cross, cross platform. platform. Pro cross-platform play. Yeah. The way they, they described this was that they basically made the PS3 version and kind of down res for the Vita, up res for the PS4, and are hoping to pull off a simultaneous gameplay experience across all three platforms, which I haven't really seen yet. The closest they got to doing that was kind of Doki Doki Universe, but that wasn't even really like cross-play. This is like true simultaneous action it's it's like a twin stick shooter but it's it's not like full on frenetic action either there's a lot of exploration yep. a lot of suspense like it, it really feels like you're like you're in prometheus or something like that yeah. or like i said starship troopers where you're like exploring this this desolate war wasteland and, and dealing with alien threats and a lot of a lot of cool atmosphere too oh yeah and uh, this, this crap this cross platform play if they, if they pull it off i mean it's gonna bring you know, it's you have a huge amount of gamers. You got people on PS3, PS4, NV all coming together to play the game like this. That's going to be really sweet if they can pull this off. Yeah, it, it can set a nice precedent for the crossplay, which it, which has kind of had its growing pains. Nobody really understood what crossplay meant, and I think this will be kind of like the testing ground. It's a hard to thing see to pull off. Yeah, it, 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 it's not an easy thing to do. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about like three different processors, yeah. three different systems. But again, I think going for the middle ground by developing for the PS3 first the and right going to each way is the right move Absolutely. to make. I think other developers can kind of take uh, a note from this one. So that's Helldivers coming out somewhere in 2014. Again, no real solid date on that, but probably springtime or something like that. Get into some quirky stuff. Uh, quirky. For, yeah, okay. quirky is a quirky <laughs> is kind of an understatement. Uh, the next one, Mugenics. So you might have heard about this one. This is coming from the, same, the famed Team Meat, responsible for Super Meat Boy. This is their follow-up to Super Meat Boy, and damn, if this isn't anything like that game. It's good. It's just a, like a like they, they they just did like a, it's like a 180. Wow. Yeah. It, and, it, it, and if you're expecting something like Super Meat Boy, you're not gonna get that here. I don't think this you can is, expect anything. Yeah. This is basically it's a a cat lady simulator game. It is. It, it, they described it as like The Sims meets Animal Crossing. Meets Pokemon. It's insane, and it's so demented, and just some of these aspects in this game. Like we took a, a list of the developer blog on this, and like some of the, the, the stuff in this, like in the combinations of cast that you can have. It's I mean, Ed, Edmund, Edmund, and Tommy. Oh, of Team Meat. These guys have a really Man. dark sense of humor. That's just it's just original, oh, unique. Again, you yeah. saw it in Super Meat Boy, but really. Their humor is and originality is going to come to play. I mean, think about this. I mean, you, you, you're basically breeding cats, but it comes like you're you're talking about like different factors that come into play, like 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 uh, like psychosis yeah. and, and the proclivity to having the AIDS virus yeah. and growing mustaches. <laughs> and, and what happens is that you have all these different pieces of furniture. They said that over 750 pieces of fur specific furniture yeah. with specific magic powers have been developed for this so that when you put these pieces of furniture in your house it affects the breeding of your cat yeah. so they'll take on qualities yeah. so for instance you put like a ghetto blaster next to a cat that's playing Tupac it's yeah. gonna get, start getting aggressive yeah, you know and, and he's even gonna, he's gonna start dressing like that later <laughs> and then you might and then that cat might breed with uh, like a uh, cat with oh, herpes you mean and then you have that? like Chris oh, Brown <laughs> oh. so <clears throat> Oh, okay. I don't know how to explain this game other than what you said. It's a crazy cat lady yeah. simulator with constant evolutions and just that quirky yeah. style that only Team Meat can bring. I think these, and what's weird about this too is that it almost seems like they signed their life away when they signed with Microsoft. This yeah. isn't even coming to Sony or Xbox. We already know they had a bit of a rough experience making Super Meat Boy. And then when I was reading their developer's blog, I found out that they actually signed themselves away out of putting a PlayStation version of Super Meat Boy. And I think because of their negative experiences working with the console arena, that's why Eugenics right now is only being planned for iOS and PC. Yeah. You know, it's a, you know, this, it's gonna be a game that like I think you're just you're gonna constantly have a smile when you face like Endless that. replay. I mean, oh, I mean they uh, talk endless. about I what was it like 16 septillion yeah, permutations of cats that yeah. you can breed in this. You're not gonna get bored playing this. Game. Not at all. I mean, this is just laughs galore. That's Eugenics um, coming out soon. There's no real date on that one yet, but. Uh, 
they haven't ruled out multi-platform yet. I mean, I, no. I think they're gonna see, I think they're taking a big risk with this one. Oh, absolutely. This is nothing like Super Meat Boy. No, no, no. It's, there's, it's not like, it's not just like Super Meat Boy. I mean, I don't think there's anything out here that even comes close. No, to. not even. This, this is, no this is, it's yeah, almost it's like completely it's only genre. Original. Original. Absolutely, so that's, that's Mugenics coming from Team Meat. Uh, keeping on with the kind of quirky mobile, really pushing the boundaries kind of stuff, Yearwalk. That's coming out from Samogo Games. It actually already came out from Samogo Games on iOS. The developers of Device 6, one of the highest rated games of 2013, oh, yeah. probably selling iPhones as we speak. So tell us what you've played your walk. I have, yeah. What do you think? It's it, it's definitely fit in with the, the quirky uh, games here. It's a, it's a very, very atmospheric, dark, creepy thing. It, 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 it is, it is, you are playing on a touch screen, so you're, you're navigating by swiping across. But it's using parallax effects, you know, you're, it's not just on a single, you know, just looking at just one. It's thing. a new way of using 3D. It's like oh, you're it's jumping into good. and out of layers. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, it's, there's so many different kind of touch elements going on here. It, it's something that, uh, it's, it's, it, it's a short game. Mm -hmm. If you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna whip through it. Like, I think they said it's roughly about an hour gameplay. Well, but, I think they, yeah. But it, it, it's 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 going to take you longer than that because you really really have to look around and really pay attention to what's going on and the clues and what you have to do. It's it, it, it's actually going to be a it's not it's maybe maybe an hour long game, but it's it's a very slow and you really have to pay attention. Kind of like Device Six, where you have to really pay attention to what's going on yeah. to, to to get the clues to progress on to the next part. Yeah, I mean, for anybody who complains that games hold your hand, this is one of the oh. least hand holding games yeah. I've ever seen. This doesn't tell you anything. No. You just figure it out. You got to use your brain. All the clues are purely visual. Like, I mean, there's very little in terms of like a like a like a clue. It's not text. It's not like a text with a. It's it's. It's like Device 6, but Device 6 was giving you uh, some visual clues and audio clues, but it, it was like a text. I think this is kind of almost going the other way, but just purely visual clues. Purely sublime, purely yeah. the atmospheric, but uh, just Samogo is really pushing the envelope. I mean, these guys are Swedish, and, and you know, it's no surprise that this is really, like, the whole crux of this game is just dealing with pagan mythology. So, yeah. this, I, I can already see the conspiracy theorists, Illuminati theorists yeah. kind of going crazy over this kind of stuff. They said that this game is very dark. Yeah, this is gonna go into some very dark places. Yeah. This is definitely not something for kids, but this is something that is pushing the genre, the, the boundaries of what can be done, not only on mobile devices, but in gaming. Games in and really just redefining the language of how we play games by just yeah. stripping away everything yeah. and getting right down to this very core. Like it's almost like mist in a sense, where it's just again, like about the experience and less so about the, you know, the end goal. Like I said, this is what I've been seeing a lot on, on uh, especially on iOS. Is that uh, you know develop like some mobile games, especially there? They can take these risks uh, on, on yes. this platform, yes. and Jesus, it's paying off. Because it's the infrastructure. I mean, oh, they're man. just a small team. They're yeah. not dealing with the bureaucracy. They're not dealing with all the middlemen. They can just—it's so easy just for young developers, whether it's iOS, whether it's PlayStation Mobile, whether it's Android, just to get their stuff out, take chances, and we get the stuff of what could define the next generation in gaming. They don't. They can really, really put out their actual vision. You know, with some of these other big games, you know, they're, they're kind of like, like, especially some first party developers, like they're really kind of tied to, to what they're being told that with these guys, they have that complete freedom to really Card execute watch. their vision. Absolutely. And so this one's available now. How much is this uh, on iOS? This was, uh, I believe it was uh, about $399, $299. Yeah, a bargain. Well I mean, worth it. It, it, even the developer said, you're only going to get about one or two plays out of this. But it's, I think it's going to be one of those games that's just going to completely freak you out. And, yeah. um, and you'll never forget. So that's on iOS right now exclusively. Mm -hmm. And to kind of finish off with the quirkiness, a new one which I uh, just showed you right now a few minutes ago from Half Trick Studios, which brought us Jetpack Joyride, mm -hmm. the phenomenally popular multi platform indie game. This is called Colossatron. Colossatron. So this one's cool because right away it starts as like a, this breaking news, end of the world apocalypse scenario. And you know, you've got this giant robotic snake that's attacking all these US yeah. economic and military bases. It, it, it's like a, instead of if uh, Godzilla would attack, it's a giant robot monster. A giant expanding yeah. robot monster. So what, what, what happens is you don't control the snake, but what happens when it's, when it's wreaking havoc on the bases, you see these different colored parts show up and you can drag them into your snake structure and either combine colors into new colors of new weapons and turrets yep. or do the max three system where you like combine three blues, get an expanded turret. Um, but you know, I mean, like this is this is different from Jetpack Joyride. 
Do you think this is going to have the same kind of you know splash that that Jetpack had? I, th I think it will. And, and uh, you know, to touch briefly on, keep in mind this was a, this was a uh, very it was a uh, only this is a ninety nine cent game. Ninety nine cents on, 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 the, on, on the other store. And uh, what you were saying about that, you know, you're you're not really controlling it, but you're adding onto it. It's it's almost kind of like a play on like the tower defense kind of games, but in, yes. a, new, but in a new kind of way where you're, you're, they're not just stationary. Like this, he's moving around around the level, so it's it, it's it's kind of like tower defense, but in a kind of an interesting play on that kind of kind of a Katamari vibe. Yeah. In the sense that you're collecting it's, and growing as you go. Elements in, in, in together, very very cool. And, and no game's gonna be the, the same. I mean, it, it's gonna be randomized colors, randomized yeah. ways of customizing your snake. You can go for a long snake. You can go for like a super powered one. Yeah. But just a lot of fun. Just the way that it was designed. That the, the, the newscasters constantly commentating yeah. on what's going on. The breaking news, theme music. You know, it seems like you're watching an actual news reel of this yeah. happening, and it's constantly being commentated. So you yeah. feel like. This is actually happening. And a very funny over the top kind of way. Oh, absolutely over the top. Yeah. I think Half Brick is, is going to be one of those ones. That's, I think in the next year or two, Half Brick is probably going to do their first AAA console title because I think, I think they, so. like Team Meat and a lot like Samogo, they have some really unique ideas that are good for like bite sized morsels, but. Even beyond that, you can spend a good amount of time with this game That's and true. just kind of get lost in the the possibilities and outcomes of it all. Yeah, this is a give them like a little start, and then later on, if they do decide to go to some of the PS4 or something, it's just giving them a starting up to something bigger. I think. Absolutely. I, th I, th I think that this is just kind of the starting of something maybe a little bit bigger. And, you know, it's funny that you kind of ended off with this, saying that like, this is the starting of something bigger. Really, people, you got to look at the mobile market right now. I mean. You know, most people didn't take it seriously about two or three years ago, but now it's really becoming an alternative to gaming. Like, you don't even need to have a console anymore. You can get a fantastic gaming experience just out of having a tablet these days. And really, you're going to see that a lot more from the show where we're going to start covering all these great iOS games that are coming out because we're long out of the days of Angry Birds now. We're getting into some real true experiences now, like true gaming experiences that rival the, plot, the consoles and PC even. Oh, absolutely. And, and just the nature of your playing on a tablet, it's a very, very, that's what I can describe, it's a very intimate way to play a game. You're, you're holding in hands and you're literally, you're, you're, you're not using a controller, you're literally manipulating it. And, and we've seen how well that works, actually better it works with games like XCOM, absolutely. Bastion, like anything that's pretty much three-quarter overhead strategy, or even like the Telltale games like Fables, or Walking Dead arguably work better Absolutely. on a touch screen interface. So, you know, just a lot of exciting stuff. Tons of stuff to keep us rolling on episodes in Sin Infinity. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back with part three where we're talking a little bit about the games we're playing this week. Stay tuned.